Okay, guys, this is some more of these insane but real WWE backstage stories. This, this is the second half of that video from Tap Out Corner. And again, you know, support them all you can. And I really enjoyed that first half. A lot of stuff I didn't know. About money. In February 2008, I didn't know that either. From WWE, while recovering from an injury, according to former WWE okay. wrestler Sandman, the reason WWE fired Lashley was because he complained about how much he was paid for his WrestleMania 23 match. Sandman said that the almighty I never half a million heard about that. for his Battle of the Billionaires match with Umaga. Apparently, Lashley felt he deserved more, which angered Vince McMahon, ultimately leading to Bobby's release less than a year later. Really? I, had you guys heard that? I didn't. I didn't know that was over money. I thought it was just uh, chalked up to, you know, lack of getting over. Didn't feel he was over enough with the fan. Well, of course they can say whatever they want to say, I guess. But that's it. I like Bobby Lashley. I, I'm not looking to hate on him for anything. It just what I know of the business that certainly seemed like a fair amount. No. Wrestler once died and still wrestled the same day. While driving to a show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, WWE and ECW wrestler The Sandman oh, the same overdosed man. an opioid called Newbang, which killed him. The wrestlers that he was driving with pretended not to know him and dropped Sandman off at a nearby hospital. Holy the shit, I didn't shot a know that. The Sandman's heart, which thankfully brought him back to life. The Sandman still made the show and wrestled as if he hadn't died <laughs> earlier that day. Oh, wow. That's, that's a great story. I didn't know that. I didn't catch what year that was because I, I think I told you guys um, many years ago, the ECW guys, when they were wrestling Schenectady in New York, we had a wrestling school there. They would come down to our building, <coughs> excuse me, um, to use our facilities to work out and train because, you know, their ring gets set up day of the show. So we got to meet and know a lot of them, and I I didn't know anything about that. Tino Morella almost went broke trying to become a WWE wrestler. Uh, a lot of wrestlers so moved from his home in Ontario, have that Canada, case. Have, training at WWE that has been the case for Ohio Valley Wrestling. Morella was a student, so he wasn't being paid. And since he wasn't a U.S. citizen, he oh work that either. oh so he okay, all of his savings to survive. Oh shit, and he even had to borrow four hundred dollars from his mom at one point. However, right when his bank account hit zero, WWE gave Morella a call and signed him to a contract. Ah. That's cool. You won't believe what this And then he said, John Chena, and the rest is history. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't think about that extra added ingredient with Santino, you know, not being able to work. This guy told The Undertaker. Before the dead man made his WWE debut, he wrestled for a different company called WCW. <laughs> Undertaker was an amazing... <laughs> I just like the way he said, a different company called WCW, like none of us had ever heard of it before. Anybody heard of Ted Turner? No. No. <laughs> with an executive to renegotiate his contract. The executive <laughs> told Taker, Mark, you're a great athlete, but no one is ever going to pay money to see you wrestle. Well, Soon after being told this, Undertaker left WCW and joined WWE, where he main evented five wrestling why, uh, and became one of the company's most popular wrestlers. Why didn't he name? Um, I even know who it was, and I can't, can't remember. We've all heard that story about him because Callaway's told it himself. And this was posted recently that's interesting that he didn't name who WWE said it to him actually encouraged a wrestler to physically hurt another competitor in 2005 chris masters made his wwe debut backstage WWE see that never happens in masters, wrestling telling him his career would be over if he messed up his first appearance they told chris to hit his opponent stevie richards hard even saying don't worry it's only stevie chris masters did what he was told and unsurprisingly he broke stevie richards nose oh they could bruise him Oh, Masters was in tears after the match. However, what? Stevie Richards comforted Chris Masters and told him it was all okay. Now, wait a second. I wonder where he got that information from. So, Masters Masters was instructed by WWE management to injure another wrestler? And if Richards says it's all cool, you would... Steve, I, I got a lot of respect for Stevie Richards. I don't know much about Chris Masters. Um, you would think that falls in the case of, you know, accidents happen type thing. Cause again, nose is broken, bruises, cuts, that's part of the business and can happen to anybody. Typically guys will be cool Under about something along those lines. Hmm, that's just interesting. I'm sure you guys, you guys always have more details. That's what the 
main thing I love about reading the comments is you guys come in and fill in the blanks. 12 ounce bottles of beer over the course of six hours. Yeah. One time, Andre the Giant was at a hotel and got so drunk that he fell asleep in the lobby. Nobody could oh wake boy. him up and he was so big that it was impossible to move him. The hotel staff <laughs> ended up leaving Need a Andre forklift. on the floor and the giant slept the entire night in the hotel lobby. <laughs> Becky Lynch That's a great story. You can picture that happening. Like I say, you, you, you need... At the very least, a forklift, maybe a crane. Rollins bring their one-year-old daughter with them everywhere they go, including WWE shows. Becky revealed in an interview that during an episode of Monday Night Raw, cool. she opened the show, then went backstage, put her daughter to bed, and then went and did guest commentary. Lynch <laughs> also said that while it is tough traveling with a baby, it makes Excuse everything me. more rewarding and fulfilling. WWE no. Hall of Famer Sting. You guys who know me know what an how important family is to me and everything and how I'm, uh, it's just a big deal. So that that's cool. I did not know that. And that makes me like uh, Becky and Seth even more. He died in 1997. On Monday Night Nitro, Steen repelled from the rafters for the very first time. Moments before that happened, Steen was told to step over the railing and be prepared to jump down. Just then, the stunt crew realized that Steen's gear was on backward and they had to fix the rope shit. while Sting was standing on the edge. The icon revealed in an interview that had he oh. done, he would have fallen to his death. Did you know? In 2000. Oh, that's, that's a little disconcerting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give Sting credit for having balls. Because after hearing that, as they were fixing the rope, I would say, nah, I kind of lost faith in you guys. I'm just going to walk down there. 11, Mark Henry was told to go out <laughs> to the ring and wrestle a match against Sin Cara. However, Sin Cara never came out, and the entire thing well. was a prank pulled on Mark Henry. Henry felt disrespected and became so mad that he was going to quit I WWE. did hear Vince something about Man that. He apologized, but thought that the anger Mark Henry experienced would make for a great character. This then created the Hall of Pain storyline that eventually led to Henry becoming World Heavyweight Champion. Batista That's kind of cool. I had heard something about that, that they had gotten pranked something. Wasn't, um, and again, you guys know more of the history of a lot of this than do I. Wasn't um, Sin Cara noticed, wasn't he noted to be really hard to work with? And again, I asked that as a question. I don't want to throw that accusation at anybody when I don't know. I'm asking. I, I thought I had heard that he could be a real pain in the ass, but... You guys will straighten me out one way or the other. See, if you talk, if you, if you want more details on the insider stuff from 70s and 80s, even 60s, because I'm that old, <laughs> but you guys, you guys are way more up on this, and, and, and I like that. In 2008, WWE made the controversial decision to go from TV 14. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we've, we've heard, we might have, didn't we see this in one of the early videos one of the we broke down? The wrestlers were no longer allowed to bleed. Batista yeah. didn't like it and decided to bleed during a match against Chris Jericho. The animal knew that what really helps tell a story in certain situations. Was be. Batista was didn't he end up paying everybody else's fine too? Jericho, the referee and the producer for the match were each fined five thousand. Batista nobly covered the three Co fines on top of his covered head, it all, forcing right. him to pay one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. That's a class move. I don't care what anybody says. That's a class move. And I respect him that he felt it was that important to the match to bleed. Big Show had eaten some bad food before the match, which led to something unfortunate. Oh, boy. Lesnar gave Big Show the F5 that then caused Big Show to have a messy accident. Brock thought it was hilarious, but Big Show didn't find it as humorous. Oh. Bill Goldberg did not want to. Ooh. A Big Show unscheduled release? That would make for a really, yeah, it'd make for a big show, all right, of Goldberg. something. When he was trained to become a wrestler, yeah. Bill had oh. up with a ring dame. He ended up deciding to call himself the hybrid. However, WCW, the company he was wrestling There's for, old Ted said he Turner. couldn't use it because they wouldn't be able to sell merchandise. Goldberg said he would never be popular enough to sell anything. WCW disagreed and decided to use Bill Goldberg's surname, which he's continued to be called ever Goldberg. since. Goldberg. Hall was a genius. Oh, that, uh, that worked out well for him because at least you, they can't copyright that name away from you when, when it is your actual name. you got, you got to stop using that, bro. <laughs> for what he put in his contract. Paul's agent revealed that when the bad guy went to WC, These are really there was interesting. There condition in his contract that made Scott millions of dollars. The I was about to make a really terrible remark and say there was a special allowance in his contract for... <laughs> For substance use. The deal was that if WCW Sorry. signed anyone and they were getting paid more money than Scott Hall, then WCW would have to increase Hall's salary to match it. Because of this, wow. Scott Hall earned over $4 million from his WCW contract. 
Wow. That's a nice no Whoa, that's a nice contract. Holy crap. I've heard about this backstage fight. During the show, Kali gave his opponent a huge chop across the chest, which was Big Show's signature move. After the match, Big Show confronted Kali backstage about using his move. They got into an argument, leaned to Big Show punching Kali in the face. The Indian native fought back, and soon a real fight between the WWE wrestlers broke out. In the chaos, Big Show tripped over a chair and fell to the ground. Kali stood yeah, up but there are... and the fight came to an end. Big Show was later forced to apologize for throwing the first punch, which the great Kali accepted. Was it there? Aren't there different stories though about exactly how that fight went? I believe there's more than one take on it. What I've heard for the most part was it was mostly like two big grunting beasts kind of rolling around type thing. <laughs> CM Punk and Booker T had real beef with each other but, backstage. And it again, in any business, especially sport, sports related, you got a lot of people who were in shape, aggressive, <laughs> plenty of them doing juice. Um, you're going to have flare-ups. But when you have to do all that physicality in the ring as well as part of your job, it's, it's going to happen. While in the locker room with the other wrestlers, CM Punk got up and said, as the locker room leader, I'm telling all of you guys to pick up your trash. While some of the wrestlers saw Punk as the leader, Booker T did not. To show that, yeah. Booker literally threw his trash on the floor right after CM Punk made his command. <laughs> a WWE <commentary laughs> <man>? <laughs> <laughs> Booker T's a badass. He's one of the legit badasses too in the business, and uh, I can't imagine Punk would have <laughs> would have wanted that confrontation. <laughs> Once beat a wrestler in a real fight. In 2008, WWE was doing its yearly tribute to the Troop Show in Iraq. Okay. JBL had been hazing and pulling pranks on his co-workers, which included dumping ice on ring announcer Lillian Garcia while she was asleep. Another recipient of JBL's bullying was... He is just a... Just Styles, a though, he, take he is the... It's just a prank bro dude. That... He definitely crosses that line between pranking and bullying. It, there is a difference. The former WWE champion in the face. Joey's strike ended up giving JBL a black eye, which could faintly be seen on TV a few days after the incident. According to those who were there, JBL was a lot quieter after being punched. Why did <laughs> change his nice. And start wearing biker shorts. In 2003, <laughs> at an October WWE event in San Jose, California, Triple H wrestled his first ever match against Goldberg. During the fight, Triple H got injured and tore his groin. To help him walk, the game had to start wearing. Oh, that shorts. makes that However, makes sense. The Just support. So tight that multiple people had helped Triple H get into them. This is what the thing there though is: if you're going to use them for support for a groin injury, they got to be that tight. If they're not insanely tight, they're not. They're not going to help. They're not going to hold everything together. Yeah, the Miz deserves way more respect. So that, that's interesting. WWE hosted an after party for the wrestlers and WWE employees. However, the WWE writers were not allowed to attend. When the Miz found out about this, he decided not to attend the party and instead bought dinner for all of the writers. That's cool. When Sin Cara came to WWE, wow! Did not know that one. That's a that's a class move right there. Well done. Ah, all right. Good good for you, Miz. He, he was really excited to meet Kurt Hawkins, but it's not for the reason you're thinking. Kurt was surprised by this, considering he had only been in WWE for a few years and had wrestled in many big matches. After talking with his co-workers, Kurt found out that the reason Sin Cara was excited to meet him was because Sin Cara thought Kurt Hawkins was Edge. <laughs> John Cena was... <laughs> oh, oh, that sucks. <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah, because if somebody got that excited to meet me, I would just naturally assume it's because they think I'm an old, fat, stone cold. That's it. Stone cold that let himself go. <laughs> refused to lose the WWE Championship to a younger wrestler. In 2010, Jack Swagger won the Money in the Bank contract at WrestleMania. The next night on Raw, Swagger attacked and was ready to cash in on the WWE Champion. However, Cena recovered before the All-American American could use his Money in the Bank contract. Jack Swagger shared years later that backstage, John Cena refused to lose to him. This led to Swagger instead cashing his briefcase on okay. SmackDown and defeating Chris Jericho to become the World Heavyweight Champion. A few days after that, Cena said this to Jack Swagger. You're not championship material. 
This is likely how John Cena legitimately felt about Swagger. Did you? That's interesting. Okay, so I guess then you got... I know Cena gets grief, and I don't know if it's true or not. Obviously, I, I have no way of knowing for sure. We only know what we get secondhand. That Cena had uh, complaints, or there's been people saying that he would was unwilling to drop a belt, burying people. The thing of it is, I'm not making excuses for anybody. If you genuinely don't like someone, you've been in the business a long time, Cena had been at that point, don't like someone, don't think they fit, I kind of get it. If you're, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I understand the sentiment. If you're refusing to drop a belt for your own ego, that's when it becomes a real big problem. If you feel like you've got a strong case where this guy just can't do the work, again, whether it's right or wrong is up to the individual, you but know, at least it's understandable. WWE, Jeff and Matt Hardy would be paid $150 per match. However, the Italian Stallion, the man who trained Jeff Excuse and Matt, me. took $100 as a booking fee. This left the Hardys with only $50 after every match. Damn. On top of that, Jeff and Matt also had to pay for their own travel expenses. Yeah. There was also an incident where the Italian Stallion abandoned the Hardys and left them stranded when they were supposed to travel to a show. What after the hell? That, the Hardys told them to be to call them directly if they ever wanted to use either Jeff or Matt. Not only did WWE do that, but they eventually offered the brothers full-time contracts. Nice. The Hardys didn't have to give the Stallion a single penny. Rick what the hell is that horse shit? You take 67% of the pay cut as a booking fee? Scumbag. Blair Sorry, that's just, that's scummy. He refused to take a picture. At the unforgiven pay-per-view in 2005, Flair fought Carlito for the Intercontinental Championship. The Nature Boy won, and after the match, WWE wanted to get a picture of Rick with the belt. However, Flair refused because he would have to take off his shirt, which he didn't want to out of pride. WWE oh. ended up finding the champion $5,000 for not taking the picture. For not taking the picture. This wrestler tried to destroy the... <laughs> that's a tough one. I, I, I understand where Flair is coming from. But I understand WWE needs, I mean, promotional material is how you keep your business afloat. That, that's a tough one. Career. Early in his WWE career, Undertaker had a huge match against the WWE champion, Hulk Hogan. During the fight, Ric Flair interfered and helped the dead man hit Hogan with a tombstone pile driver onto a chair. Immediately after the move, Hulk Hogan broke character and whispered to Undertaker that he was hurt for real. Once Hogan got backstage, the Hulkster allegedly asked to speak to his wife and kids due to how much pain he was in. Undertaker felt awful for not only hurting a fellow wrestler, but also for potentially ending in the career of WWE's most popular wrestler. Taker could have even been fired for such a big mistake. That However, looked... Shane McMahon informed and... the Undertaker that Hulk Hogan's head never hit the chair. I was just going to say that looked the entirely the clean. The, instant, the Hulkster still stuck to his story, now saying that his neck was jammed because of how tightly the Undertaker's knees were around his head. Despite Bullshit. That, Hulk Hogan continued to wrestle for over a decade, and the Undertaker went on to become one of the greatest of all time. Oh, we had heard something about that. We had heard something about that before. What the hell is wrong with Hulk Hogan, you guys? Uh, the more we, we do these things, and and I knew bits and pieces. You guys know I'm not a Hogan fan. Anyway, let me be fair. I'm not a fan of Hogan's in-ring work. Never was. But the more I hear about him, the less I'm liking him. I, I, I got to make a video on this whole thing that I saw of him cutting a promo or an interview about Mick Foley, too, because I got some serious comments I'd like to make about that. If he... <clears throat> As far as I'm concerned, if he made that up, if he did indeed, he was just faking that because he didn't want Undertaker getting over, or whatever the case may be. But to me, there's not much of anything worse you can do than accuse somebody of seriously injuring you in the ring. That's that's bullshit. That that makes you that makes you garbage as far as I'm concerned. If he really wasn't hurt and he, he tried to play that shit. <sighs> 